Hey, welcome to the Pit Connection. I'm John Evans, and today, as you can see, we're at Head Start of Fayette County. We'll be talking about the Head Start programs, also the center of excellence of Head Start, and you'll find out more about that later on in our program. Once again, Head Start is a division of the Private Industry Council, so stay with us. Don't go away. It's going to be an exciting program today. Okay. Hi, I'm Jean Sigilia. I'm the nurse consultant for Fayette County Head Start, and you're watching the Pit Connection. Welcome to the Pit Connection, and today is going to be a wonderful day. I'm here with four lovely ladies at the Head Start Early Head Start Division, and I'm so excited to be here. I always enjoy coming over to Head Start Early Head Start and talking to the ladies over here because they are so professional and they make me look good. All right, let's let me start out with Tanya Heider. Tanya, what is your title, and uh, tell me a little bit about your program. I am the Assistant Director for Head Start and Early Head Start. And I'm going to talk today about parent engagement. Okay, so you're the assistant director. So when the director's not here, you're on the spot then, right? I am. All right. <laughs> what is parent engagement? Parent engagement is getting parents excited about being involved. In, in our program, it's with their child, with themselves, with the community, and with the program. Parents are our business. We believe in the Head Start community that parents are their child's best teacher. Mm -hmm. well, Tanya, why are parents so important here at Head Start, Early Head Start? Well, where else can parents be involved with decision making in their child's school? Yeah, yeah. We have what's called a policy council and it's like a school board for our Head Start program. Parents vote in who's going to be on that council from the community, but parents are going to sit on the council they attend meetings and they actually make decisions in the program on grants, um, hirings, and they have many opportunities. One thing that we don't do at our meetings is fundraise. Mm -hmm. well, yeah, I think it's so important to have the parents involved like that, uh, you know, making decisions like that so then they buy into the program. It's probably more successful that way. It is more successful and we want the parents to attend those meetings and focus on what the parent themselves need. The meetings are about them. Mm -hmm. We provide babysitting. Um, the program has funds that the parents can request to plan activities for themselves, and the program takes care of what the children's need are. Okay, so the parents are uh, at the parent meetings are not involved with fundraising to earn money to pay for these activities? No, they are not involved in fundraising, but they are very involved in planning those activities. They can work with the classroom staff, the home-based staff to plan activities. They can use program supplies to carry out those activities, and we encourage them to be involved. Now, parents, are they allowed to visit the classrooms, uh, Tanya? They are allowed to visit every day. Our buildings are always open to families. They can come in and volunteer. That We want them to see what goes on in our classrooms, and sometimes because of their schedules, they may not be able to come into our classrooms, but if they want to help, we will find a way for them to be involved in the program. Okay, now you mentioned volunteer. Now, what would a parent gain from volunteering to be in the classroom? Well, we, in our classrooms, have a lot of degreed staff, and part of when you want to get into the education field, you need to have contact hours with children. You need to be in classrooms. Many of our employees were Head Start parents. They may have also been Head Start children. For example, when I was a classroom instructor, Four of my aides, um, of them three were actually Head Start parents. Mm -hmm. um, they are now employed in the program. One is an instructor and she has a bachelor's degree. She's actually working on her master's degree. Two of them are instructor aides. They have associate degrees. They're actually working on bachelor's degrees. Um, one of my staff currently helped one of her enrolled parents gain a CDL license to be a wow. bus driver, and she is now going to be an employee with us. Wow, that is fantastic. Now, what about other training opportunities for parents? We have many opportunities in the program. Obviously, we are a division of the Private Industry Council. The Private Industry Council has many career and training opportunities. Our staff are trained on how to connect parents with resources in the community so they can better themselves and their families. Tanya, how does a parent get engaged? They get engaged by enrolling their child in the Head Start Early Head Start program. They can fill out an application if their child's birth to age five. If they're a pregnant mom, they can become enrolled in the program as well. It opens the door for their child's 
start to their education. It gets them engaged in the program and in the community. And we are a Head Start family and a support system for those families. Fantastic. Tonya, you talked about the greed staff here at the uh, Head Start Early, Head Start Now. I know that people don't like, like to brag about themselves, but I like to brag about the staff here because you really are professional people here. What is your educational background? I actually have a bachelor's degree in early childhood education. I'm a certified teacher. I've taken master's courses, and I've been with the program since 1994. Wow. That's fantastic. Tanya Hyder, thank you so much. Assistant Director here at Head Start Early Head Start for coming on the show today and making me look so good. Thank you for visiting us. Okay. Well, let me get over to Susan Gallagher, who is the Health Nutrition Manager. Susan, uh, thank you for coming on the show today. Hey, tell me about your area. Okay, my, um, I'm the Health Nutrition Manager, and I oversee the Health Nutrition, Mental Health, and Disability Services part of the program. And in that area, I have an entire um, team working with me. I have three LPNs. I have a registered nurse consultant. I have two nutritionists. I have a registered dietitian, a family wellness consultant, a health coordinator, and an education coordinator. Wow. So I have a wonderful team working in, in my area. In addition, we collaborate and have um, support from community agencies, from the early intervention providers in the county. So we have a whole team, not just a Head Start early Head Start staff, but a support staff throughout the county to provide services, comprehensive, comprehensive services to our families and children. Great. Now, Susan, what type of support do you provide in the areas of nutrition and health services? Okay, as far as health, what we do is we look at each child individually and we work with the parent as a team to assess what the child needs. If they need um, medical care, they need well baby checks, they need lead and hemoglobin tests, they need um, dental exam and treatments. And we work with um, each parent to ensure that the child gets what they're entitled to. Mm -hmm. In addition to that, we have here at our North Union site, we have a lab set up where our LPNs can do testing. They can do lead and test to see if the child is anemic. We also have um, great machines that we go out and do hearing and vision testing on all of the children. So we provide whatever supports and whatever um, the family needs. Um, for instance, our hearing and our vision screenings. When we go out to do this, we identify children that did not pass those screenings. We work with the families to follow up to get the care that they need. We identify every year dozens of children who need glasses because we pick that up from that, that vision screening. Mm -hmm. We picked up children from the vision screening that need eye surgery. We have, um, through our hearing screenings, We've identified numerous children that had ear infection that needed medical treatment. We've even identified several children who need hearing aids, and we pick that up through our screenings here at Head Start that our nurses do. Okay. As far as nutrition, we um, have family style meals provided. Um, the children in our classroom receive two meals a day. Children at our socials that come in, they receive meals. Um, we have food experiences that the children can participate in hands-on and they get involved. We invite the parents to come in, get involved in, in helping in the classroom, prepare um, any ideas they want for food experiences. Uh, we do a health history and an assessment on every child in the area of nutrition and address any um, needs that is identified on special diets, um, eating habits, work with the family as a team, both here and in their home, to make sure that the child is healthy and is receiving all that they're entitled to receive. Great. Now how about the children with special needs? How do you help there? Okay. We're, um, the program believes in inclusion and we include all children that have special needs or disabilities in all of our comprehensive services in our classroom or our home-based home-based settings and we look at each child individually and they have their own um, education plan and we provide services with the early intervention providers which would be the intermediate unit for the preschool children or for children birth to three Fayette County Behavioral Health Administration and we provide whatever services that it is determined individually that that child and that parent needs. 
for the parents. We provide training. We um, refer them to support groups. We have a great um, support group, for example, in the county called PAC, Parents of Autistic Kids, that some of our parents participate in. Um, for the children, they receive whatever supports that they need, speech therapy, occupational therapy, physical therapy, vision and hearing support services. Anything that the child needs, we provide here in working collaboratively with the other agencies in the county. Great. Now how about the social and emotional needs of children? How do you support that? Well, through our curriculum and through our policies here and the training that we provide to staff, um, we have what is called positive discipline policy and we um, focus on the positive things with the children and the parents. Um, for example, if children come in, we would um, work with them to, to teach them um, how to uh, follow directives, how to interact and play with their peers, and um, provide positive reinforcement to them in the form of praise, stickers, reinforcing um, activities, so, and we would help the parents give them strategies and ideas and things that they can do in the home and work as a team. We also have a family wellness consultant that works with us that goes around to all of the classrooms and socials and observes the children. And if we identify a child that might need a little bit of support, we work with the family, we bring that team in, and we have her available and we can work in the home, work in the classroom with the family, or make a referral if needed to mm -hmm. an outside agency for service. Wow. Susan, uh, your educational background. I have a bachelor's of um, science degree in special education and I'm a certified teacher in the areas of special education, elementary, and early childhood. Yeah, that's great. And uh, once again, thanks so much to Susan Gallagher. All right, <coughs> Joyce Monair. She is the Family and Community uh, Partnership Manager. And uh, Joyce, thank you so much for coming on the show today. Thanks for having me. Tell me about your area. Um, well, in Family and Community Partnerships, uh, one of our primary responsibilities in, is ensuring that the children are enrolled <clears throat> and eligible for the program. So that is what I'm going to be talking about today, how to enroll your child, how a child is eligible, okay. and how we recruit children for our program. Well, who is eligible for Head Start, Early Head Start? Well, um, all Fayette County residents with a child from age birth to age five years old and pregnant women are eligible. Uh, for Head Start, the child should be three before the kindergarten cutoff date in the school district in which they live in, and they turn five after the kindergarten cutoff date. Okay, now how does a child become enrolled and does it cost anything? Um, Head Start and Early Head Start are free, fairly funded programs. What was that? Free? Free. Free. Wow. All right. You don't see that often. <laughs> um, however, you do need to qualify. Um, there, it, the program is for primarily for low-income children and their families, mm -hmm. although we are able to um, service 10% of our enrollment in over-income children, um, but we do need to service the neediest of the needy first. Yeah. Uh, also, 10% of our enrollment opportunities uh, must be available to children with verified disabilities also, so we can service over-income children. Okay. You know, the, other thing, the other thing that impresses me about this uh, building here, um, Joyce, uh, when I came in here to, to get in, my goodness, it was like, uh, you know, you, you just can't walk into this building. Oh, absolutely not. And I think that's also very important for the community out there to understand that uh, you know, no one could just come into this building, uh, even me, as famous as I am. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, it took me, you know, uh, Harry Metz, the director, had to come down special to, to get me into the door. Because you know you just uh, there's there's procedures you got to go through here, Absolutely. so I just want to to bring that out and uh, I know everyone here is always uh, concerned and always looking after the children, and I think that's so important also. Absolutely. Now, how can a parent get an application, uh, Joyce? Uh, well, we have several different ways. In May and June, the program staff go out and they do door-to-door -door recruitment in all <clears throat> excuse me in all areas of the county looking for potential clients. So naturally, they don't stop at every single home door to door, but they are quite successful in obtaining applications. Uh, we also participate in different community events. For example, in June, we were at the Fayette County Family Fun Fest at mm -hmm. the fairgrounds, and I believe we got a little Mr. McFeely was there, wasn't he? Yes, he was. Okay. <laughs> um, we were able to get about 20, a little over 20 um, 
folks that were interested in our services. So we did follow up and obtain applications on those families. Um, also, uh, you know, anyone's able to stop in our office at any time that we're open, Monday through Friday, 8 to 4.30, and we can always have a staff person available to sit down with them and answer any questions they have, uh, fill out the application, um, and thoroughly answer any questions that they have. Uh, they can arrange to come and get a tour of a classroom if they'd like, uh, you know, just to make sure that this is a good fit for them. Okay, and that application process is not real extensive um, or? It's, well, two main things that we need to verify to make sure a family is eligible for services. We need to verify age, of course, you know, they need to follow that kindergarten cutoff date. And we also need to make sure that they're income eligible. And we follow the federal poverty income guidelines that are set forth by um, Health and Human <coughs> Services Department. Mm -hmm. um, what ways we can do that are through uh, pay stubs, W-2s, determination letters of Social Security, um, child support uh, letters, um, TNF determination letters, all those forms can be used to verify income. Okay, and once again, how can uh, somebody get that application? Absolutely. Uh, we can mail them to you, although our staff do need to verify those documents. Uh, our office is located at 492 Cold Spring Street in Uniontown here, and our phone number is 724-430-4818. Very good. Joyce, your educational background. I have a Bachelor of Science degree in Management Information Systems, and I've been working in Human Services for uh, six or seven years now. Wow, that is fantastic. It's always impressive talking with you ladies. Yep. All right, Sue Polajak, how are you doing? I'm good, how are you? Good. What is your area, Sue? What's your title? My title is Early Childhood Education Development Manager, so I oversee the education component of Head Start along with these ladies. Um, education is the largest component of, of Head Start and Early Head Start. We have uh, myself as the manager, seven supervisors, an education coordinator, and a little over 80 instructional staff. That includes classroom teachers, instructor aides, family resource specialists. Um, the education services area supports children's growth and development based upon their individual needs. And just like all adults are different, all the children are different as well. Okay. What happens after a child is enrolled in Head Start or Early Head Start? Um, once your child is enrolled um, in, in Head Start and Early Head Start, um, they, are, they are given an option, either a home-based option for Early Head Start um, or a classroom option for Head Start. Mm -hmm. And also in Head Start we have home-based options as well. Um, all children receive the same educational services, whether they're enrolled in a classroom or in a home-based service. And um, once the child is enrolled, they'll be visited by a degree teacher in their home, and they'll get to know their child and, their, and the family, see the child in their environment, um, to be able to support the child and the family as best that, the, as best that they can. And if they're in the classroom option, um, they'll be transported to school on a school bus. And then on certain um, days of the month, home-based children come in and socialize at the closest center. And again, if needed, they'll be um, transported on a bus as well. The children, like Sue said, are fed two meals a day. They, um, we, work with, we, work, we work very closely with the families to determine their individual needs. Mm -hmm. that, that is um, in the classroom, what the expectations of the parents are. And once we, once we identify all those needs through Sue's screenings, the teacher screenings, then we can make a plan for the child individually to help them, to support them the best um, that they can so that they are successful. In the classrooms, we at the, at, the, at the various sites, we have 11 sites and 23 classrooms around the county. We have state-of-the-art playgrounds at the sites. We have um, a variety of materials in the classrooms for the children to play with. And um, they come to the classroom, make friends, become independent, have fun, and just really get a head start in life. Um, the families can come together, as, as Tanya talked about, we really encourage parent involvement in the classroom. Mm -hmm. that, really, that really shows the child that they are important in their family. The parents come in, and they get to see how the teachers work with, their ch with the children, and um, they just really begin their journey yeah. and get a head start. It's so important, I guess, with the first five years of the child's life that they really get socialized and uh, really get adapted uh, to the environment around them. Exactly, and, and in the education um, component of Head Start, that's really the focus is socialization, gaining independence, 
and getting ready for the transition to school age. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and Head Start Early Head Start does such a fantastic job in that. And, and I think that's why this organization has been honored uh, in the past. Uh, I know you won the um, Center, I'm sorry, the Circle of Excellence, is that correct? Or Center of Excellence. I was right the first time. Mm -hmm. uh, the Center of Excellence Award, which is like, uh, like, like the award, correct? It is, it, it, it is that we were one of 10 Head Starts around the country that were recognized as a center of excellence. Yeah, and, and that's uh, on top of other awards I know this organization has uh, gained uh, in the past too. And all because of, uh, of you guys here and the rest of the staff in this organization. And, and that's why I, I just love coming over and talking with all of you uh, because you're all so, such professional people and dedicated. And it's also the first time maybe for some of our viewer, viewers who listen to the PIC radio show on Friday mornings that all of you have been on the show, so maybe they can, you know, hey, yeah, okay, now I know who that is. You can put a name to, you know, to a face. So uh, that should be uh, pretty good, too. But uh, thank you all for coming on the show today. And don't go away, because up next is the person, the director, Jackie Hoppy of Head Start, Early Head Start. So we'll be right back, so stay with us. Hello, I'm John Evans, and welcome back to the Pit Connection. I want to thank everyone for being on the show today. And if you have any questions or comments about today's show, please email me at jevans at privateindustrycouncil.com and I will select a few messages to read at the end of the next show. I'm looking forward to hearing from you. Well, let me get to Jackie Hoppy right now. Jackie is the director of Head Start, Early Head Start. It's a uh, honor for me to talk with Jackie uh, because I am a West Virginia University graduate and uh, Jackie is a Marshall University graduate. So. We'll try not, not to get into any arguments here today, okay, Jackie? No arm wrestling. Okay, very good. <laughs> uh, Jackie, uh, for our viewers, tell us uh, about your background and how you came to uh, Head Start Early, Head Start of Fayette County. Happy to do that. I'm, I'm thrilled to be a part of the Head Start program for many, many reasons. Um, but I just got here, actually, in June of this year. Um, I've had a wonderful opportunity to get to learn um, what's going on here this summer. But in addition to that, I, this isn't my first exposure to Head Start. Um, I have a degree from Marshall University, as you said, um, but it's in speech language pathology. As a result, um, one of my first jobs was in a Head Start program. So I was able to deliver those services to um, Head Start children some time ago. Mm -hmm. um, so it was a, a nice opportunity. But after that, I spent some time in human resource management, um, in banking, as well as in higher education. And then I did some training, spent time doing uh, managing a training program for uh, a class three manufacturing um, facility, actually making interocular lenses, which are the lenses that replace your cataracts. So oh, okay. I've, I've had a bunch of experiences. I didn't even know what that word meant. <laughs> <laughs> well, I only learned it then. Um, but it, it's just a very a varied and, and interesting set of experiences. Um, I've learned about regulatory kinds of things in mm -hmm. that process. And so all of those things, I think, have prepared me to come here and and to really have a, a wonderful opportunity to work with people who have a passion for our children. Boy, they certainly do, don't they? Absolutely. Now, were you impressed as much as uh, I was impressed when I first learned about Head Start, early Head Start, about all the professional backgrounds of the, the folks who work here? Absolutely. And that's one of the reasons we have a Center for Excellence. Um, we have been, um, I think, segmented from all of the other Head Starts and are one of ten um, centers of excellence, and I think that's something that I'm extremely proud to be a part of that. Had nothing to do with it, but mm -hmm. I'm certainly proud to tell everybody about the people who did and to let them know that not only do we have the Center of Excellence, we also have ongoing programming um, for socialization that um, parents, community members can take part in, again, free. And so it, it's free. Free, All that right. word again. We <laughs> love it that we have free things to offer. It is, uh, that, that is nice. and. Uh, in your perspective, Jackie, uh, the, the short time that you've been here, where do you see Head Start Early, Head Start of Fayette County? What kind of vision direction do you see it going in? That's a good question. Um, before I got here, they decided that their mission was to educate, encourage, and empower. And I'm just so thrilled to be a part of that short um, way of describing what we do. Um, we're here to educate. Um, we want to do that at the beginning of life, even before children are born. Mm -hmm. We have an opportunity to work with pregnant moms um, and, and help them even before they meet their child. And then from there we can go from birth to five years 
of age, um, working with kids in a variety of ways, things that you may not have an opportunity to do if you didn't have a connection with Head Start, um, the therapy services, um, the food. You know, it's always hard to get children to, to try new foods. Yeah. But when they're in an environment where they're with another group of kids and, and it's a, a whole, whole um, experience with others, then it's a little bit easier to try those things. Um, you know, they have opportunities to learn with others. Um, they don't just learn in a classroom. Um, many times I see them walking up and down the hallway outside my office, and I love it when they come in. Um, so they're just a, they're wonderful opportunities for that education um, that doesn't just end with ABCs. Mm -hmm. We also like to educate the parents as well because we feel like the parents are really the main educators for our children. Our parents are the, the people who actually have the, the main impact and the main ability to, to yeah. help their children grow, but sometimes they may need some extra tools on how to do that, so we like to help that, offer that as well. Yeah. Well, Jackie, uh, thank you so much for coming on the show today. Once again, Jackie Hoppy, Director of Head Start, Early Head Start. It's a wonderful facility, and Jackie, if someone would want to come over, maybe just check out the facility, that's okay for them to do? Absolutely. We'd love for them to see the kinds of things that we have, because where else can you go and get the kinds of services that we offer free that you might pay as much as you know thousands of dollars for okay. other places. So we've got wonderful equipment, playgrounds, rooms, and we'd love for people to see them. Okay. We're open. All right. Thanks so much to Jackie Hoppy, once again, director of Head Start, Early Head Start. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Well, here I am, relaxing at Head Start and Early Head Start. Boy, I have a tough job. But I do have an email from the last show, and it's from Pete, and Pete lives out in Smithville, PA. And Pete wanted to know about the engine at Frank Auto's that was in the background. And Pete, that wasn't an engine, that was a barbecue grill. And for more information about that barbecue grill, which cost uh, $600, you can call the number at the bottom of the screen. So keep those emails coming. I'll be talking to you next time.